The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 718. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yapchan, and today I have an amazing lady on the show today. She's an actress and a singer, and I'm really excited to have her on and share her story with us today on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Alice Ko. Alice, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to the listeners. Oh, hi. I'm great. Thank you for having me on here. Yes. So my name is Alice Ko, and I was born in Hong Kong, and I moved to California when I was 12. I have been doing performance since maybe around 2008 or nine, and I moved to Los Angeles about five years ago to pursue my career further. Thanks for sharing that. What'd be your favorite self-confidence quote? My favorite self-confidence quote is, you are innately wise. Thanks for sharing that great quote. And in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? To me, self-confidence is about having that courage to make a decision that you have absolutely no regrets about. It's like living your best life. I mean, that is not to say that you become this hard-headed person and you don't listen to other people at all. It just means that knowing what you want so well and trusting that inner wisdom that you have no regrets on your decision, even though it might not be the most popular or the most conventional decision out there. Thanks for sharing that great definition. I totally agree. Sometimes you have to go with your gut instincts and it doesn't matter if people don't understand it as long as you understand it. And you know, everything happens for a reason and everything works out in the end. So thanks for sharing that great definition. And Alice, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? Before I would make my decisions based on how other people would perceive me, or I would be trying to please others, whether as a parent or a boss, a teacher, or just random strangers whom I don't even know, (laughs) you know, I don't even know these people, why am I trying to please them? Somehow I think that their opinions matter more than what my own opinion is. And or somehow I thought that they would help me to get to my goals, like which is like pretty silly when you think back, because why would we let a stranger dictate how we feel about ourselves? So I think there's just way too much noise out there. And I think that was how my life was and what my decision making process was before I discovered my own self confidence. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, I think that's something we all go through, right? We feel like society is telling us what to do. And we feel like if we don't do what we're told, we're considered crazy or, you know, something's wrong with us, not realizing like there's so many ways to live our life, to do the things that we want. And it's not just this one linear way of doing things. And, you know, especially as Asian, we're always taught to just live that one way of life because it's the only way they know and has worked for them. But, you know, times are changing. We're in a different generation. You know, back then there was like no social media, there was no internet. There wasn't as much Asian representation as there is now, right? That's slowly coming up. And so we have to learn that, you know, just because something worked five years ago or 10 years ago or 50 years ago might not work today. And, you know, what was that point in your life when you realized you can go out there and be who you are today, have that confidence? What was that aha moment? The aha moment probably was when I decided to quit my job in the tech industry. I used to work in tech because um, I lived in the Bay Area and that's what everybody did. I decided to quit and pursue a career in performance. And at that time, everybody thought I was crazy to quit a nice paying job in the tech industry. My boss even offered to give me a raise of $5,000 just out of the blue. Alice, stay. Is it about the money? And then my even my own voice teacher thought I was crazy to go into a performance career. I still remember that moment that she told me, wait, aren't you supposed to go the other way? Somehow making me think that the arts is just something that people have 
for fun, even though this is my voice teacher. And that really hurt that, you know, really hurt my feelings that your teacher is somebody who is supposed to support you and whom you trust to pursue to to further your artistic ambitions. And I was really caught by surprise. And I think that moment, it kind of gave me a wake up call in just looking at myself, what do I really want to do? Am I brave enough to do it? And I knew that it wasn't about the money or the prestige of quote unquote, having a good job. It was something that I knew it was inside me for a long time. And I felt really strongly that I just had to do it. And that was my aha moment that it is something so strong inside me that no matter what, I just have to do it. And that gave me the confidence in just seeing life in a different way. Thanks for sharing that. And you know, it's, you know, it's not always easy to quit some quit a job, right? Especially a stable job to do something you love when you have friends and family who tell you, what are you doing? Are you crazy? Why would you quit something so stable, something that gives you that, you know, stable paycheck, and you're going to do something that you have no idea what's going to happen. And, you know, I think it's because we've also been programmed to, to, you know, expect the paycheck, expect the job, expect this. So many expectations that we we are so afraid of the unexpected. We're so afraid of the unknown, not, real, not realizing we can actually embrace it and you never know what opportunities may come to us, right? You know, yeah. just because someone offered you an extra $5,000, I mean, when you think about it, that's not a lot, right? I mean, there could be more, there could be another opportunity that could you know, offer you two, three times that amount, but you won't know because you wouldn't take that leap of faith. And, you know, you were able to, and because of that, what's your realization after that? It's my realization after that. I just realized that I was much happier than before, even though money might not be the same because, you know, in the arts, you, it's like really hard to be conventionally successful and I like to use the word like conventionally a lot because what is it what really defines success right it's all about what you want so I think like after that decision I was definitely much happier before and I feel and I felt really empowered because I was doing something that I've always wanted and I felt that trusting that innate self allowed me to build that self-confidence that comes like afterwards, like years and years to come. And it has like freed me from the need to be validated by uh, others around me. And I think strangely enough, over the years, people whom I haven't seen for a long time would come up to me and they would say how much they admired my uh, courage to just go out there and do what I want to do. And I think for myself, I was just following my own gut and what I wanted to do. But it seems that to other people, that was really courageous. And that that's always like touched me that following my own dreams and building my own confidence has um, inspired others. And hopefully, you know, they would do the same. But I think also, I have to be careful because people coming up to you telling you how great you are. Everybody loves to hear that. It's another form of validation. So you do not try, you know, you try not to let that get to your head and somehow like drown out your own voice again with this other type of, of, of noise. And so it's always good to come back to uh, your own self and just really, really stay true on what you want. So I think, um, I don't know, I don't know if I answered your question. <laughs> I just like started going off there. <laughs> oh, no, no, I totally understand. Sometimes, you know, like sometimes we love, we love positive feedback, right? But sometimes we get so obsessed with it. It's like, if we don't get any positive feedback, we're not good enough. And we have to realize on our own that we are good re enough, regardless if we do get that positive feedback or not, because we have the confidence in our own abilities to go out there and do what we love right? And yeah, sometimes we have to drown out that kind of noise um, so that we can go on. Because if not, sometimes we could stay like paralyzed and realize like, oh, nobody's saying anything. I must not be doing something right. So I, I really like that you mentioned that. And, you know, to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey to self-confidence. What would be that one tip you would give to her? I would say trust your gut. 
You know, we read about these like scientific reports and saying that your gut is your second brain. And I actually really do believe it because I also have a science background. I um, I actually went to school as a chemical engineer, some science background. And the trust your gut part, I really truly believe it. But sometimes like we are so inundated with like outside noise, like social media, and what other people are telling you to do, that's like we don't hear that inner voice. So I would say if you struggle with trusting your own gut or hearing that inner voice, you can um, meditate or exercise or take a walk. Just do something that allow you to not let that voice get to you the the outside noises get to you so you can really hear your own voice because i as i said before i truly believe that everybody is innately wise and we just need to let that innate wisdom come out thanks for sharing those great tips and if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do or check out some of your work is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with Uh, Yeah, I have a professional link on IMDb, and it is www.imdb.me slash Alice Co, A-L-I-C-E-K-O. Thanks for sharing that. To our listeners, if you want to connect with Alice, you can also head on over to the TaoSelfConfidence.com and search for Alice's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I really just want to thank Alice today for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Alice. Thank you for having me. Not a problem. It was really great having you on the show. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of The Tao of Self-Confidence. Get your free audiobook by visiting our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.